Hello, everybody, and thank you for joining us for another value packed tenant cloud podcast. If you want to be a more informed, better educated, and successful landlord, then stay tuned. With over a decade of property management experience, we bring you short and sweet, bite sized pieces of incredibly valuable property management tidbits in 15 minutes or less. You won't want to miss out on these four incredibly essential issues to watch out for in your rental so that you can improve your occupancy rates no matter what market you're in and reduce your exposure to liability. Let's get started. So you know that in taking care of your rentals, the better you take care of things, the longer that they last. And that is true with just about anything in life that you own, any physical product or physical item that you have, if you take care of it, it will last much longer. And when it comes to rental properties, that is especially true. And you want to make sure that you are taking care of your rental property, not just so that it lasts longer and maintains its value, and even increases in value, but also to help reduce your overall vacancy and improve your retention rates, as well as avoid any exposure to liability. And so in this podcast, we want to cover four essential things that you really want to make sure you're paying attention to as a landlord. It's important to note that If you have poor maintenance habits and practices and you don't take care of minor damages that seem minor at the time, they can often lead to dangerous consequences. So the first thing that I want to cover with you is mold problems. Now, it's interesting to note that in my property management experience with the companies that I've worked with, we were actually trained to not use the word mold because it is an extremely sensitive uh, liability issue with your tenants. It can be a very dangerous thing to encounter and it can have serious consequences for people living in a rental unit if there is mold present and it's a harmful kind of mold. Now, it's also important to note that there are different types of mold and not all molds are bad. We're actually surrounded by molds everywhere we go. In fact, foods that we eat are, many of them are molds. They're different variations of mold. So it's important to get that distinction out there right away out of the gate. What we're talking about here is the molds that are harmful and that your tenant cannot live in an environment where there are these types of dangerous molds present. And there's many ways that they develop, but there are a few simple things that you can make sure that you're doing and educating your tenant on to avoid anything like this even having a chance to develop. And a few of those things are, you wanna make sure that you're doing regular building inspections on the exterior of the building. You wanna make sure that there's no evidence of moisture getting inside the building. So you wanna do roofing uh, roofing inspections. You wanna make sure that you're checking the gutters to make sure that they're draining properly, that they're not stopped up. And you want to make sure that there are no issues with pipes or evidence of pipes leaking inside the home either. Anywhere that there's moisture or signs of moisture, which could be markings on the walls, on the sheetrock, uh, dampness anywhere inside the residence, those type of things are all signs that you might have a moisture issue, which in turn results in a mold issue. And so you want to do those regular inspections, both interior and exterior of the home. But also some very basic things is you want to make sure that, for instance, you have a vent fan in your bathroom. And even if you don't have a vent fan, I know some older properties may not have those. You want to make sure that you're educating your tenants that they need to air out the room after a long hot shower or really any uh, shower at all. It needs to be aired out. And that's that's the purpose of a vent normally is to air out that small space so that the moisture doesn't just sit in there and create this perfect environment for mold to grow. In the end, if you have a mold problem or you think you have a mold problem, you do need to get it tested. And you can hire a certified mold inspector to do the testing because you do want to rule out that the 
mold A is harmful to you or your tenants and B, you do want to confirm if it is a harmful mold. Now you have to go through a remediation process to get that mold out of the rental and that can be expensive. So it's much cheaper to be proactive when it comes to moisture issues and uh, not reactive. If you're reactive, it can really end up costing you a lot of money in the long run. And it's, it's a huge liability if you were aware of mold or did not conduct routine inspections. And so it's just better just to play it safe, be proactive, and do the regular inspections and educate your tenant on ways to avoid um, containing moisture inside the residence. So that's the first thing is mold problems. Definitely don't want to let that one slip. Number two is, uh, we just touched on this a little bit, was lack of ventilation. You want to make sure that you have ventilation in your rental. And that goes, again, for the the small things, such as opening the windows and not keeping the house uh, tight and contained uh, enclosure all the time. Making sure that you have a vent fan in all of the bathrooms. And if you don't, make sure your tenants know you need to open up the doors or open up a window to air out this room so that it doesn't contain all this moisture. And then a vent hood over the stove space so that it is venting out the moisture from when you are boiling water and cooking and things of that nature. You wanna make sure that you also are providing ventilation or educating your tenant to allow the rental to be ventilated because you don't want uh, odors and things of that nature to become an issue in the rental that you have to spend a lot of money on to get rid of them. For instance, people who cook a lot of spicy foods or things that are, have a strong, um, powerful odor or scent to them. You want to make sure that it's not sticking to the walls and the furniture and the carpet and the flooring and so on and so forth. So you want to make sure that you do have a vent hood over the stove so that it's venting those things and filtering those scents out. The other thing you want to make sure that you're doing is make sure that you're educating the tenant on the air conditioning system and make sure that they're if they're staying there for a year, two years, three years, and some people don't open up windows. So you want to make sure that they're opening up the windows periodically doing those spring cleanings and just making sure that fresh air is getting into the rental unit itself so that you don't have these issues down the road where you have to paint and kills the entire rental or replace carpeting everywhere or flooring or if it's a uh, if it's a furnished rental you don't want to have to be getting rid of or deodorizing sofas and couches and beds and so on and so forth. So ventilation is extremely important and it's definitely one of the things you want to make sure that you are both uh, allowing for in the rental in terms of making sure that certain things are installed, but also educating your tenant to make sure that your rental is being ventilated on a regular basis. The third thing is carbon monoxide. If you have any devices or any appliances or anything in your rentals at all that produces or puts off carbon monoxide, you want to make sure that your rental has carbon monoxide detectors in the rental. Carbon monoxide is a colorless and odorless gas that can be extremely deadly. And so you want to make sure that you do have the proper equipment in your rental. Make sure it's inspected on a regular basis. Make sure the batteries are changed if it's a battery-operated device. If it's not and it's an electric one, you want to make sure that it's working and do routine, sometimes even do quarterly tests on it instead of just an annual test to make sure that it is working. And also, you want to make sure that it's been professionally installed. If you are not positive that your carbon monoxide device was installed by a certified and licensed professional, you do want to make sure that you check on that because a lot of those uh, devices, they have a very specific way that they need to be installed. So you wanna make sure that that is addressed in your rental unit. And you also wanna make sure that if the alarms do go off that you have educated your tenants on what to do if the carbon monoxide detector is going off. You wanna make sure, for instance, that they leave the residence 
and that they call emergency as soon as possible. You don't want them sitting in there while the alarm's going off and carbon monoxide is building up in the rental and eventually knocks them out and kills them. So I know that sounds really intense and really crazy, but at the same time, it is it happens more often than you think. And people don't necessarily understand that when that detector is going off, that's not just a that's not a smoke detector, that is a carbon monoxide detector. And that is a whole different ball game. And so uh, it's just important to educate your tenants and make sure that if you do have any equipment, appliances, et cetera, that puts off carbon monoxide and that there is a potential chance that there could be a leak in the rental at any point, uh, even if it's well-maintained equipment, that you're educating your tenants on these things. Last but not least, the fourth item is plumbing issues. Again, this has a huge component on tenant education. I cannot tell you how many times I have heard property managers uh, talk about these horrifying experiences of things that tenants either put down kitchen sinks or put down the toilet or put down the tub and people with septic tanks and people were flushing things down them that damaged the septic tanks that resulted in thousands and thousands of dollars. Uh, There's so much stuff that goes into plumbing and a huge part of it is educating your tenant. Uh, There's tenants tend to not understand plumbing dangers and acceptable plumbing habits. And so it does rest on you because it is your property. It is not their property. They are simply renting it from you. You do want to make sure that you are educating your tenants when it comes to plumbing issues, especially if your rental has a unique situation where, for instance, it is an aerobic septic system or something like that. And you can't flush certain things down the toilet or you can't use certain products or chemicals when cleaning the tub and so on and so forth. So again, plumbing, major issues. uh, If it's not, if you're not proactive about it, if you're not educating your tenants on it, and that could even be putting stuff inside the rental, like a framed something or other sign above the toilet or uh, in the bathroom in general or on the bathroom door, some type of permanent fixture that has guidelines on what to do and what not to do in this particular rental. Because uh, again, tenants just don't know it's not their property. They're not informed on these things. And they might have just come from a property that was connected to the city sewer, which has a whole different list of acceptable items and things that they can do as opposed to yours, which might be on a septic system. But this isn't just for septic. This is also things for garbage disposals. People put crazy stuff down their kitchen sinks. They think that the garbage disposal is the ultimate destructor of all things that can go down the sink. Anything that can fit that garbage disposal can take it on. And that's simply not true. The garbage disposal is actually a very fragile uh, appliance that is only meant to really chop up the very small things that may get through there. And it cannot handle a lot of uh, things that end up clogging it, damaging it, burning it out, whatever. So again, it's just uh, in general, there's a lot of things that go with this and that could be installing water softeners and how those work. And if you have to provide regular maintenance on them or if the tenant is responsible for it and there's just a lot that goes into it. So you do want to make sure that whatever your situation is at your rental for your plumbing, that you are educating your tenants and that you are uh, sending out routine regular reminders and that you are conducting routine inspections to avoid those costly damages that could end up costing you thousands in plumbing costs. So Once again, this has been a podcast with Tenant Cloud, and we look forward to seeing you next time. And if you want to read some more detailed information on this, you can find it in our recent blog post titled, Honey, We're Killing Our Home. It was published on October 28th, 2019. And feel free to chime in and comment anywhere that you are listening to this podcast or on our blog post. And feel free to share this with anybody that you think could benefit from hearing this podcast. We do appreciate you taking time out of your busy schedule to listen to this. 
and we hope that you were able to get some helpful information and insights out of this podcast. We'll look forward to talking with you next time. Thank you.